so the topic for today is triplet repeat disorders so i think now by now you'll have you'll have some confidence regarding this group of disorders so we'll just have a quick revision about this group mostly theoretical aspect but uh, any practical related question you can just ask me so you all know that uh, structure of genome you remember so structure of genome has unique uh, sequences but they also have this repetitive dna sequences so these repetitive dna sequences either they can be dispersed throughout the genome as you can see here or they can be in tandem tandem repeats is they are arranged one after the other so they are in turn divided into satellites mini satellites micro satellites we will see what are these in the upcoming slides okay so as the name suggests suppose if you have a this is not a triplet this is a quadruplet so you have four repeats and these four repeats are arranged one after the other and is repeatedly present present in a sequence then we call it as tandem repeats okay so why they were called satellites so the satellites account for 10 to 15 percentage of the repetitive sequences they are highly repetitive and generally occurs in the region of heterochromatin that is near the centromere and near the telomeric regions so these are the regions which contains satellite dna and the reason why they the name satellite occurred is because they try to separate all this dna forms by density gradient uh, centrifugation method they found that this group of this region of chromosome they appear as a small band when compared to the main dna so the density of this particular satellite differed so it, it appeared as a band and because of this uh, particular reason they call it as satellite so uh, these can be divided into as i told you micro mini macro satellites so micro means just up to nine base pairs we call them as micro satellites and mini satellites are somewhere between 10 to 100 base pairs and more than that are called macro satellites so this mini satellites are otherwise called variable number tandem repeats and this micro satellites are otherwise called short tandem repeats or simple sequence repeats so you have different names by which we can call them in short you have to just understand micro satellites are those which are less than 9 base pairs and they are uh, they are arranged in tandem now the question arises not everyone has same repeat number so it's highly polymorphic and this is the reason they form the basis of all this here key of pcr testing this that so the reason why such variation occurs is so during your dna replication what happens is the machinery gets confused because all these are same repeats which gets arranged one after the other so the machinery gets confused so sometimes it it's, it it gets slipped from its original course as a result of which the number can decrease or increase because of slip strand mispairing so this is one reason another reason is during a crossover which ha happens in meiosis 1 so sometimes this crossover as you can see here repeated sequences so the crossover if it occurs again if there is an unequal crossover if there is a mal alignment then this is again going to result in your variation in repeat numbers so the question arises why such variations are required just to create diversity in species okay so with this background let's move uh, move on to the triplet repeat disorders this simply means three nucleotides are getting repeated and again and again but if it goes beyond a particular range then problem arises so these group of disorders are called triplet repeat disorders and uh, where do uh, where they occur they occur obviously in genes whose natural sequences contain multiple repeats and this uh, problem with the dna machinery or the rna machinery is they get confused when they try to handle these repeats as a result of which sometimes expansion or contraction takes place and uh, when dna repeats are transcribed or replicated as i told you there is a very high chance of error causing a change in the number so these are like almost more than 40 neurological and uh, neuromuscular disorders are associated till date and as you can see here they are in, they are involved in different parts of the gene okay so different group of disorders are involved in different parts of the gene and we uh, grossly classify them as polyglutamate disorders and non polyglutamate disorders polyglutamate means cag repeats cag which codes for glutamate so they if they get expanded beyond a limit then they are called as polyglutamate repeats and they generally occur in the coding region in the exon or the splice site region and uh, these are uh, some of the examples for polyglutamate disorder the prototype disorder is huntington disease whereas non polyglutamate disorders are due to some other repeats but they mostly occur in the non coding region and the classic example is fragile x syndrome okay so we'll see just a, a prototype of each of these subgroup so fragile x do you remember or do you know how the name was derived why they have labeled it as fragile x 
initially when they were trying to uh, evaluate this intellectual disability kids especially males so uh, at that time only karyotype was available or only chromosomal staining was available so when they tried to look this chromosome under the microscope they found that this particular x chromosome in those individuals who have intellectual disability males they found this fragile site there is a gap you can see right so during ha huh, so during the chromosomal staining they found that this particular gap was there and they described this as a fragile site on long arm of x chromosome and this was characteristically seen in all the patients affected with intellect all the males affected with intellectual disability so this then they realized that maybe this intellectual disability is associated with this particular site so that's why the first and especially this was when it was segregating in a x linked dominant uh, semi dominant fashion so this uh, that's the reason why it was called fragile x syndrome and it was described by martin and bell so the patho mechanism is important so before that this is a fmr gene fmr gene has a promoter 5 prime utr you all know that so the problem occurs in the 5 prime utr so 5 prime utr normally has the cgg repeats but this cgg repeats when uh, when it goes beyond a particular range that is if it is 46 to 200 then we call it as pre mutation in fact 46 to 55 they call it as gray zone 55 to 200 is actually the pre mutation and if the repeats are more than 200 then we call it as full mutation so less than 46 is considered as normal repeat so what happens is when this and uh, this fmr1 gene it codes for a particular protein which is expressed in various tissues but highest in neurons and that's the reason they predominantly have autism by spe autistic spectrum disorder and intellectual disability and second they are expressed in testes and ovary so this is again the reason for premature ovarian insufficiency in pre mutation carriers and what is the function of this protein they shuttle like this is an rna binding protein they help in the transport of certain mrnas between the nucleus and the cytoplasm so what happens so what is the actual mechanism happening when the repeats are more than uh, 55 or more than 200 so what happens is this promoter region which is very what is the function of promoter in any gene to promote the gene transcription right so what happens is uh, whenever the repeat extends beyond 200 this promoter will get methylated so if you remember the previous class non mendelian inheritance i told you methylation happens and what will happen if anything gets most of the times it gets silenced okay so hypermethylation happens of this promoter region as a result of which there is absence of transcription initiation and therefore there is no fmrp protein produced okay so this is the normal uh, this is a normal one and this is the mechanism which happens in fragile x syndrome so no transcription so no fmrp protein and therefore this these individuals can have the characteristic finding but in pre mutation the mechanism is quite different in pre mutation there is no hypermethylation of promoter there is only decreased efficiency of translation initiation translation happens transcription happens translation happens but because of the uh, 55 to 200 repeats there is decreased efficiency as a result of which this fmr mrna whatever it is formed this is not going to be uh, properly assembled in short uh, in pre mutation the mrna is formed but it is not sufficient enough or it is not good enough to perform the function whereas in full mutation there is no mrna no protein and therefore there is a problem so full mutation is a loss of function and pre mutation is that mrna not functioning properly and therefore the protein also is not getting formed properly so males will have range of severity can have significant intellectual impairment and all this dysmorphism we don't see in everyone and that is the reason we say that any male with intellectual disability this should be one of the differential to be considered along with it they also have hyperflexible joints and behavioral symptoms mostly autism spectrum disorder and attention deficit disorder adults yes they can have when they become adult they can have cardiac issues like mitral valve prolapse or atrial fibrosis dilatation and females if you remember only 50 percentage at all so 1/3 to 50 percentage will have uh, in fact 1/3 only have significant intellectual disability and the behavioral symptoms are less severe so females are less affected So with that can you anyone interpret this pedigree So the light ones are pre mutation dark shaded are full mutation What pattern can you observe Males are transmitting females are also transmitting correct But any characteristic uh, phenomenon you observe here 
Yeah, hey, anticipation is right. Anticipation is the severity keeps on increasing, right? But what else do you observe in this pedigree? Huh? No, even father is transmitting. No? Males are transmitting. Yes. When males are transmitting, you can see that the disorder is less severe, right? It is not very. Huh? But in fragile X, you see a characteristic feature that when a father transmits or when a male transmits, mostly they lie in the premutation only, right? Intermediate or premutation never gets expanded so much. Whereas when a mother transmits, there is a high, a, a premutation carrier mother can transmit into a full expansion, right? So this is called a Sherman paradox, otherwise called as anticipation. So it, actually, it is a form of anticipation only. But in fragile X, you see this characteristic pattern that when male transmitting it, even if the male has premutation, when he transmits it, Expanding into full range probability is very, very less in the next generation, okay? In short, females, when they transmit the disorder, there is a higher chance for full expansion. So this you already know, uh, fragile X tremor ataxia syndrome, it is age-dependent penetrant disorder, pre-mutation. Yeah. X-link, semi-dominant. Yeah. So FX-TAS is a pre-mutation uh, pre carrier, have a risk of developing it, but only in the old age, around 60 to 65 years of age. As the name suggests, they can have tremors, they'll have ataxia, et cetera. And uh, both males and females can be affected, but what they have seen is female uh, males have a higher chance for getting affected with FX-TAS. And the penetrance is again age-dependent. As the age advances, the penetrance of this particular disorder increases. Whereas premature ovarian insufficiency, as I told you, 20% of the females who carry premutation only will develop premature ovarian insufficiency. But despite that, they can go on and have normal conception. Okay. And uh, sometimes it can be seen as a primary amenuria also. So very rarely primary amenuria. So if, it, uh, if you rule out Turner syndrome, then you can also get tested for this. But the chances of getting a positive report, a premutation carrier is quite low. And other manifestations like they can develop osteoporosis or cardiovascular disorders. Okay. So can you tell me the repeats? Full mutation repeats are? Full mutation repeats in fragile X? More than 200. Premutation? 55 to 200. Then you can answer this. A female has a CGG repeats of 50. These are in fact gray areas, I told you. You can call it as premut, but mostly gray areas. So how will be a... These are just hypothetical scenarios. Not like we're going to check anyone and we get a repeat like that. But what do you think if a female has a CGG repeat of 50, what will be a counseling? <laughs> No, will her next generation be affected or not? Really? Right, this is an intermediate allele, correct? Gray area. So, will not cause fragile X. An intermediate allele won't go and cause a full expansion in the next generation. A premutation allele can cause. Itna expansion nahi hoga ek generation mein, right? So in her next generation, fragile X will not occur. But 14, it has been seen that 14 to 15 percentage will expand into a premutation range. From this intermediate, it will expand into a premutation range when transmitted by this mother. You got the point? She won't have one because 50 is intermediate range only. Like in fact, the classification is less than 45 is 46 is normal. 46 to 55 is gray area, which means she can, uh, uh, it can be a pre-mutation range or it can be intermediate range. So she may or may not have these problems, premature ovarian insufficiency. In short, 50 repeats, we can, we can confidently say that her future generation won't be affected and she also won't have any problem. Okay. If a male has a repeat of 100, 100 is what? So how will we counsel? For counseling for him and for his future generation. Now, pre mutation to kya hoga, ma'am? Future generation, with whether he'll be able to transmit. Yes. So, will it cause fragile X syndrome? No. He cannot transmit it to a male. Female, he can transmit. 
बट फीमेल में एक्सपेंशन नहीं होगा वेन इट इज ट्रांसमिटेड बाई अ मेल so the female can have a pre mutation so her next generation can be affected with fragile x syndrome but what will he have so we have to explain that he is at risk of developing fragile x tremor ataxia syndrome which is a age dependent phenomenon because it is this is a pre mutation range so he can have this problem later on okay why is it pre it is called pre mutation because that particular range is not significant enough to cause fragile x syndrome so that's why we call it as but this pre mutation is causing some problem later in life okay female with 90 repeats this you identified by some screening and then she is worried about her next generation will we do prenatal 90 is pre mutation right first you think what 90 repeats are she is a pre mutation carrier so how will you counsel her 55 to 200 is pre mutation so 90 repeat she has which is definitely she is a pre mutation carrier so here sometimes what happens is um, a modifying factor okay so not not like 100% full proof but what we can say is sometimes the cgg repeats will have this interspersed agg repeats can you see here you can see here right the cgg repeats sometimes can have inter uh, like in between they can have this agg repeats so what they have found is the number and position of this agg repeats is important for the overall stability i uh, the problem here is it is unstable that's why it's getting expanded okay so what they have found is with agg repeats are there then somehow it gets stabilized so it can give us a uh, give us an idea that how much unstable or how much stable the expansion will be the next generation so the presence of agg interruption will have a reduced risk of transmission to a full mutation in cgg repeat so this will just give us an idea still we have to do pre mutation uh, uh, or pre natal testing and we have to identify what is there in the fetus but this can give us an idea that when it's less than 100 repeats and if the mother has this agg repeats also along with the cgg repeats the risk of full expansion is little bit less when than when compared to only cgg repeats you understood what cgg will tell about the yes sir yes cgg will tell whether there are inter in, uh, intervening repeats cgg repeats are there or not this is just a modifying factor not a full, not like if she has cgg repeats she definitely won't have a child with fragile x syndrome but this will give us an idea suppose you do prenatal and you still find that the uh, that the fetus also has a pre mutation range which means this can be one of the reason for not getting expanded into a full mutation this interspersed agg repeats so these are all modifying factors so in short you have to understand that it's not just the type of repeat or the number of repeat or location of repeat there are other modifying factors which can alter the stability of such repeats okay so up to 100 they have seen like 55 to 200 is a pre mutation so up to 100 repeats of a mother is carrying there is still a chance that there will be no expansion in the next generation but between 100 to 200 irrespective of all these factors it will definitely get expanded into full mutation in the next generation so these are all, these are all based on observations 90 may agg nahi hai to for more chance for full expansion 90 may agar agg hai there is a probability that it won't get expanded into full mutation in the next generation No, no, not particular number. Just interspersed. Then, correct me, but no. Most it will expand. Even in fact, less than hundred also is not a, a full probability that it won't expand. It might not expand. So, female who has CGG repeats of one fifty. No, 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 no. यहाँ पे थोड़ा गर्मी है मैम हाँ या सो हियर फर्स्ट थिंग इज ऑफ कोर्स रिगार्डिंग द काउंसलिंग यू विल डू फॉर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन बट इन एडिशन इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेल दैट शी इज ऑल्सो एट रिस्क ऑफ डेवलपिंग प्री मेच्योर वेर एन इनसफिशियंसी बट वॉट दे हैव फाउंड इज इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ रिपीट साइज इट्स नॉट लीनियर रिलेशनशिप इट्स नॉट लाइक अ फीमेल हुआ है हाइयर pre mutation range will have a higher chance it's not like that in fact they found that between 80 to 100 who have repeats they have a higher chance of uh, premature ovarian insufficiency than with than with those who have between 100 to um, 100 to 200 okay right. these are all based on observations man okay so non linear relationships not like as a repeat increases the chances increases it's not like that as far as premature ovarian insufficiency is concerned okay
prenatal testing how will we counsel uh, this you know male fetus female fetus we have discussed in the case genetic counseling exercise we have discussed mother is a premutation carrier and then you did prenatal prenatal irrespective of the report if or the fetus is found to be affected male fetus at the care counseling hoga female fetus at the care counseling hoga this to we discussed already male to will be definitely affected fragile x syndrome we can explain regarding that female may how will we explain in fact severe are not as severe as males so you will say that the fetus affected fetus is affected and uh, has a uh, chance 50 percentage chance for mild to moderate intellectual disability okay 50 percentage are intellectual disabled remaining will have certain mild learning disability or some other social emotional issues etc but this has to be informed okay what is the mean then what is the mean tppcr okay that we will discuss in the end but you would have had class on tppcr sometimes such dilemma arises prenatal testing revealed a repeat size between 195 to 210 sometimes they give a range also in fact most of the time it will come as range only you we won't have an absolute single number so what is this range more than 200 is mutation so this range is borderline borderline so which means some of the tissues might have a pre mutation range some of the tissues might have mutation range so that is a, but then how will we counsel here so here also even if it is a intermediate range we can't go and test tissues how much percentage of them have pre mutation mutation but nearly 100 percentage will still have intellectual disability but it will not be as worse as males who carry the full mutation okay so here also we will tell them that males will have intellectual disability and females again it is highly variable okay so this is how your counseling goes so this is in short a table when mother carries an intermediate allele mother carries a premutation allele full mutation if father is having a premutation so what can happen in subsequent generations and their percentages okay so this is just for counseling purpose so you uh, get a male proband with a fragile x syndrome a female proband with a proven fragile x syndrome okay so in both these conditions who uh, whom do you want to test like we order uh, screening for parents also no, most of the times in a male proband whom do you want to test both father and mother mother both father and mother only mother or only father mother only mother because it is an x linked disorder and male to male transmission will not happen in case of female both but is, is it possible if a female has a fragile x syndrome and if you are agar father ke through transmitted hai to father what should he have he have yeah he having a pre mutation but then child having female child having a full mutation is very very less likely because expansion does not take place so in that case mostly he should be no he should be a he should also have full mutation that is one probability but in fragile x it has been seen that who carries a full mutation males they generally don't reproduce okay so this is a very very less likely uh, clinical scenario so offspring of an individual with full mutation as i told you males generally don't reproduce uh, and they have significant so that uh, there's no question of offspring getting affected and in females so you know it's 50 percentage risk okay but 20 percentage i told now who carries a pre mutation or 20 percentage suffer even in that 10 to 12 percentage can go on and have normal pregnancy okay so individual you are um, coming across an individual who has classic picture of fragile x syndrome then you do tp pcr repeats are normal you get 30 repeats okay 
So how will you go about now? No, but you're very sure that it's fragile X. All the classic fish, long face, macroorganism, all those things are there. FMR1G. FMR1G? Yes. So if that is there, less than one percentage, very, 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 very less chance, but they still, they can have deletions or single nucleotide variations in the FMR1G, in the promoter of FMR1G. As a result of which the child can have fragile X syndrome. It's not just the triplet repeat mechanism, even a nucleotide deletion or nucleotide variation can result in fragile X syndrome, but the incident, but the chances are very, very less. It's less than 1%, okay? So with that, we'll go to polycute disorder. So polycute disorder, I'll just talk about Huntington disease. So Huntington disease, we know it's an age, age penetrant disorder. So progressive disorder of motor cognitive psychiatric disturbances. So here the mean age of onset is somewhere between 35 to 45. And uh, once a disease onset occurs, the survival time is hardly like one or two decades. And there is also a condition called juvenile HD. So juvenile Huntington is, uh, the symptoms occur before 20 years of age, but these individuals will not have chorea. They will have more of intellectual disability and uh, cerebral large symptoms, seizures, uh, speech regression, something like that. Okay, so they won't have the classic chorea as we can see in Huntington disorder. So the importance of this is this protein uh, performs several functions. You need not know about it, but it, it is not like FMR protein where they just only help with the transportation, but here they also do other lot of work. And here, the repeats you can see in unaffected, it is just less than 34. Less than 34 is called, they are the normal repeats. And uh, this is a gray area and more than 40 repeats are affected. So can you see any difference between um, this Huntington disease repeats and fragile X repeats. Anything which you observe, apart from the type of repeat, that is CGG, this is CAG repeat, that is okay. Correct. Yes. So there, it's in, in a less number of repeats. Correct, exactly. So less number of repeats, the disorder occurs. This is because in a protein coding region, when the problem occurs, even a small number of repeat expansion is sufficient enough to cause the problem. Whereas in uh, fragile X, it was occurring in the fibrin UTI region. So more number of repeats are required to cause the problem, okay? So they have found that if the repeats are 40 plus, it's a classic disorder, but more than 60 repeats, then it can occur in the juvenile period also, juvenile hunt as juvenile Huntington disease. So this is a, just a function where this, uh, all other functions, all different functions are affected because of the mutant Huntington protein, okay? And if you remember in fragile X, it is a loss of function. I told there is no transcription initiation, no mRNA, no protein. But here what happens is because of the expanded repeats, this Q, Q is a glutamate. You can see here, this Q in the in between the protein coding region, you also have this polyglutamine tract. A lot of glutamate gets added. So when this lot of glutamate gets added, this is going to exert a toxic effect on these different functions of the protein. So here the protein is formed. But the protein, what it is formed, has a new function, has a toxic function. So that's why this is called as a gain of function disorder, whereas fragile X is a loss of function disorder because no protein is formed there, okay? So it has been seen that apart from uh, the repeats determining the onset of disorder, even they can predict the age of death also, okay? The higher the repeats, the early the death will occur. And the rate of deterioration increases with larger CAG repeats. As you can see, more than 60 repeats can cause uh, juvenile HD. And juvenile HDs are generally more serious and they have faster progression of disorder. And it has been seen that even homozygous. Can you, this is an autosomal dominant disorder. If two individuals with Huntington's disease marry, then there is a 25% chance of homozygous Huntington disease. Then you will think that homozygous will be more severe, right? Generally, that only happens. When achondroplasia, if two achondroplasias marry, then there'll be a homozygous achondroplasia, which will be more lethal. But here it has been seen in Huntington's disease that homozygous individuals will also have a near age of onset. Reason is not known, but this is a uh, phenomenon observed, but they can have an accelerated rate of disease progression. So this is one such disorder where irrespective of heterozygous or homozygous, the onset of disorder is almost same. And there are a few genomic modifiers which have been seen. It is not just the CAG repeat, 
but there are other factors also which i'm not talking about but they also can have interspersed few repeats which can modify which can stabilize them or which can increase the instability so many things can happen that is the reason we can't uh, give a clear counseling for such disorders and uh, contradictory to your fragile x syndrome here paternal transmission is observed so what they have found is when transmitted through sperm the alleles become more unstable again reason exact reason not known but paternal transmission so father is transmitting an huntington's disease there is a higher chance of expansion than when a mother transmits so this is opposite to your fragile x syndrome and sometimes you won't come across family history it will look like a simplex case it will look like the first case again the reason for that is because maybe and it's a triplet repeat anticipation is seen so maybe you are at to recognize a disorder in the family or one of the parent might have expired before or it can be due to reduced penetrance or late onset of disease so there are so many factors to be considered if there is no family history in the family okay so now if you understood about huntington's and someone can try this if a parent has an htt allele with cag length of more than 40 36 to 39 27 to 35 so what is the risk of offsprings to develop hd so who is this parent that is important mother or father so let's keep it as father let's take it as father okay the father has 40 repeats he is affected or not he is affected so what is the chance he will transmit 100% so what kind of huntingtons can occur in the proban uh, i mean in the uh, next generation so if mother is affected then the, there is 50% chance that the next generation is also affected but will have huntington but if father is affected then there is a higher chance that juvenile hd can occur in the next generation because of risk of expansion okay 36 to 39 it's again pre mutation if a father is transmitting higher chance for expansion so there will be a better if mother is transmitting there is a less, lesser chance for expansion okay so that's how the counseling goes so risk of inheriting a full penetrance is 50 percentage the first scenario and uh, in case of second scenario everything is 50 percentage but the penetrance varies depending upon the pre mutation or mutation range okay suppose if it is 27 to 35 what is 27 to 35 is normal right so here what happens is the risk of offsprings will depend upon the cag size and also the sex and age of the transmitting factors apart from the other other modifying factors like cis acting factors etc okay so what is your idea of predictive testing what is predictive testing so whenever we talk about predictive testing we take huntington's as a classic example so what what do you understand by that term the age of father and mother testing and age of consent No, no. Predict. What, what do you understand by the term predictive testing? Now, like this predictive testing means pre-symptomatic. We are going to predict whether the disease will occur in an individual who is asymptomatic at present. Okay. So the same father comes to you who is affected with Huntington's and his son or daughter is less than eighteen years old, and they he wants them to get tested. So what will be your counselling? Second. This video. Now, will you do the testing or not? Yes. This father has a son or a daughter who is who is minor, right? Who is like less than eighteen years of age. He wants them to get tested because he is quite worried about their future and all those things. So he wants them to get tested. So will you test the son or the daughter? That's the question. So this would have been discussed predictive testing exactly so that is the point uh, again it is based on the case scenario right suppose if there is a disorder which has an immediate effect and there is a treatment available for it so even irrespective of whether chi child cannot give consent but if you think that that disorder is treatable has a uh, uh, has a treatment then you can do testing of the minors but on on such condition where at least there is no treatment now it is we don't know whether future may treatment will come or not so here testing a minor is not going to be helpful why because one is it negates the autonomy of the child because child obviously cannot decide and so less than uh, because he is a minor 
so and even if you're going to do testing it's not going to help the child at present only it can uh, disturb the family dynamics and it can cause other issues you know so as a result of which predictive testing they say that generally for non curable diseases or non actionable diseases you should not do testing in minor but after 18 years if they are willing if they want to shape their future plan accordingly then with their consent testing can be done okay so that is called predictive testing so overall the general features of repeat disorder they come from a normal existing polymorphic repeats okay they are just expansion pathological expansions of that they are dynamic in nature getting transmitted uh, with change in size from one generation to another longer repeats will cause more severe and earlier onset especially polyploid glutamate disorders clinical anticipation is common um, and parent of origin has an influence on the anticipation and highly variable phenotype because of differences in repeat size in different tissues okay so these are some of the examples of other disorders not exactly triplet but you can see sometimes four nucleotide expansion okay quadruplet pentanucleotide repeat so we have other types of disease also do you think which uh, which group of disorders will not show anticipation in triplet repeat which group which type of disorder though it is a triplet repeat disorder will not show anticipation there are few disorders like that which means you take a family history it will look like there is no anticipation so you will rule out triplet repeat right generally but there are few disorders which will not show anticipation but it is a triplet repeat disorder no nee, all scas will show sc12 ha sir sc12 no nee. i think all scas will show okay there is this opmd oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy so this is a type of triplet repeat disorder this one opmd why because the repeats are, this uh, particular disease i think just 9 10 repeats are enough to cause the disease so when the repeat size is very very small to cause the disease then naturally expansion okay degree of anticipation in a in subsequent generations you cannot see okay so this is one example can you name most of them are autosomal dominant disorders can you name autosomal recessive disorder monogenic Predatory ataxia is a predatory no. ataxia is an autosomal recessive disorder. X-linked disorder, fragile X-linked hair. Any other X-linked disorder? BMD. SBMA, spino spino bulbar muscular atrophy. Okay, so this is also an X-linked disorder. Disorders almost always transmitted by mothers, apart from fragile X. may <laughs> ma'am this is triplet myotonic dystrophy okay so myotonic dystrophy is also a triplet repeat disorder which is almost always transmitted by mother okay so the overall pathogenic now the question arises triplet repeat then how different disorders have different manifestations and different repeat ranges so the overall pathogenic mechanism is the problem can occur in or near the promoter okay so that is fragile x or the repeats can occur within the introns also then it can affect all those splicing or it can occur in the 3 prime utr so classic example is myotonic dystrophy when it occurs in the 3 prime utr it will disrupt the rna homeostasis and repeats can occur within the protein coding region that is a polycule disorders so here directly it will affect the protein translation so the mechanism of each of these disorders causing the problem is different and that's why different types of repeats and the location of repeats matter a lot okay. so this is just an example this we already discussed so in the protein coding region even small repeats can cause problem whereas large repeats will generally occur in the intron or the untranslated region okay and finally the investigation of choice right so we have different types of investigation but now what we do is tp pcr triplet prime pcr but initially they used to do southern blotting also okay but now it is not being done because it is cumbersome and it has radio exposure etc and in fragile x we can do because the problem here is uh, hypermethylation of promoter that is a mechanism so we in fragile x syndrome we can also study the methylation status methylation study by ms mlp or ms pcr and we can also go for expression studies so this is in short they were discussed in class so i am not discussing it here in tp pcr so finally these are the different techniques used 
to identify these repeats and uh, molecular therapies are still in place. So few of them have reached the clinical stage like Huntington's disease and some types of SCAs. They are trying to develop molecular therapies. Okay. 